She climbed on the bed. She hugged her child. And she started to sing her nighttime lullabies as if that the daughter was still alive. We could all see that the daughter was dead and she was not moving. But the emotion and the pouring of love that I saw from that mother would truly move a mountain. الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على نبيه الذي اصطفى نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن اهتدى بهدى أما بعد اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم June 2018 is a date that I will never forget I received a phone call from our local children's hospital that there was a victim of a crime who was a three-year-old girl and had a mother from a different state and they were flown here and they wanted a clergy or an Islamic Imam to come and console the woman because that three-year-old girl could not probably survive the crime or the attack. We went to the hospital and we were informed by law enforcement that that three-year-old girl was stabbed multiple times during her birthday party which was being held at her home with her friends and neighbors and other loved ones. The criminal who came and made it inside struck many people, injured many people, and because of his heinous actions, that three-year-old girl ended up in the ICU. After I learned that, I went to the room where the mother was housed. I spoke to her and she was saddened and she was in tremendous amount of pain and understandably so. After I tried to console her, and during that process, of course, the doctors tried their best with the nurses to save the girl. But the girl was on life support. I noticed that the doctor came in front of the room and he requested me to come outside so he can speak to me in person and in private. Obviously, I went and complied with the order and I went and talked to the doctor. When I spoke to the doctor, I realized that now the task will become much harder because now the doctor is telling me that the nurses and everybody and the medical staff has decided that there is no way to save the girl because of her serious injuries and now they will have to pull her life support and she is pretty much almost dead. So I was given the task to prepare her mother, right, to accept this news and deal with this news and come to the room where the three-year-old daughter was lying on the bed and bid her farewell and receive her body for burial and, of course, religious rites. Now you can imagine the extent of tragedy that this is and the scope of grief that a person goes through. May Allah protect all of us from this kind of pain. The mother could not walk to the room, so she had to be loaded on a wheelchair. And then with the nurses, I accompanied her to the room where the daughter was pretty much on life support. Her heartbeat was flat on the monitor. Everybody in the room, including the medical staff, the nurses, and everybody were weeping. And I started to weep because I could not control myself. The mother requested the doctor that one last time can she hug her daughter before, you know, the body is taken for release. She climbed on the bed. She hugged her child. And she started to sing her nighttime lullabies as if that the daughter was still alive. We could all see that the daughter was dead and she was not moving. But the emotion and the pouring of love that I saw from that mother would truly move a mountain. I am having to control myself right now because I can still relive that scene and emotion in the ICU. After she said the lullaby and kissed her daughter and apologized to her daughter that she could not save her, she was loaded back in the wheelchair and taken to the room Obviously, my job was done there. I had to say goodbye to her. 
And I left my phone number with her. I said, if you ever need anything in the future, please let me know. After two weeks, and after I was almost about to forget about this, I received a phone call from an unknown number. When I responded to that number, because I meet many people, there was a female on the other side of the phone. I said, who are you? So then she reminded me that she is the same person whose daughter was in the ICU two weeks ago. And she said that she would like to consult me with something. I said, go ahead. She said, I saw a dream. And in the dream, I saw my daughter playing in a beautiful garden with a stream or a river flowing with fresh water with a lot of beautiful children. And she was dressed in new clothes and she looked very happy and she wasn't sad. When I tried to go and reach out and hug my daughter, I could not do it. There was an invisible wall between me and my daughter and the other kids. So when I called out to my daughter and I said, why am I not able to come to you? The daughter said, Mama, if you want to come and hug me and hold me, you have to pray five times a day consistently. Five times a day consistently. And if you do not pray, you will not be able to come where I am and you will not be able to touch me if you ever see me in the dream. She said, I woke up from the dream. Part of me was happy that my daughter is in a much better place. But part of me was sad that I could not hold my daughter and hug her. So Imam, what do you think it is? I said, remember in the hospital when you were complaining why Allah allowed your daughter to be hurt in that way? I asked you, are you a person who prays consistently five times a day? And you said no. I said, Allah is sending you a message from the world of the spirit. We know in Sahih Bukhari that the children of the mu'mineen and the believers when they die, they are given in custody to Ibrahim alayhi salam. Why Ibrahim alayhi salam? Because the word Ibrahim or Abraham means merciful father. So those kids are given to the custody of the merciful father. So I said, their daughter is telling you exactly what we know from Quran and Sunnah. That if you do not pray five times a day consistently, you will not be able to enter Jannah or heaven. She was moved by that interpretation. And she promised me that she will change her ways and try to pray five times a day. Now I ask anybody who's watching this video, after you have been through such an incident and if you've heard this type of profound information, how can a person then deny and neglect his five times daily prayer consistently every day, every time? We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to be consistent and forgive us and deliver us from our shortcomings. Ameen. وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين